Yep, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, all right, so let's get started. So uh, this is the, uh, the Masami Oji lecture, number seven. So two more lectures. All right, so the, to, uh, this time I want to wrap up the other uh, uh, cosmic reionization story. Um, this aim, aims of the, uh, the, this session, uh, cosmic reionization number two, uh, is for you to know the, uh, the ongoing efforts and the difficulties uh, in understanding the, uh, the reionization sources. So AGN, galaxy contribution, and I want to uh, highlight the other uh, four major, uh, uh, major parameters uh, for understanding the other uh, uh, reionization sources. So this is the advance notice again for the other uh, discussion and presentation. The question I will give is the, uh, the what are the most important parameters and uh, object properties for reionization that we urgently reveal by observations and why? Okay. All right. So again, cosmic reionization. The other uh, big question for cosmic reionization is that what reionized the universe in the, uh, the first one giga year of the cosmic history. Well, there are many the other uh, suggestions of the sources of reionization for regular sources, AGN, and galaxy. And the possible sources are thought to be the X-ray binary within the other uh, galaxies, such as you know, compact object emits the other uh, X-ray that helps the other uh, cosmic reionization. And there are several exotic sources, like the other uh, dark matter annihilation that produces the uh, the many high energy particles, uh, eventually making the other uh, X-ray emission line that the uh, other contributes to the cosmic reionization, but it is quite unknown. And again, the other uh, primordial black holes are uh, also the other uh, discussed. Uh, you know, the such a black hole, you know, the emit the other uh, radiation uh, by the other uh, Hawking. Uh, uh, evaporation and so on. So, but uh, well, I, in, in, in this lecture, I want to focus on the other, uh, you know, kind of popular regular sources of the other uh, AGN and galaxy. Let's move on to the other uh, AGN first. So, yes, quasars are great ionizers, uh, producing a large amount of the ionizing photons uh, per second. However, the number density of the quasars are significantly, you know, uh, uh, fastly evolving. Uh, from redshift zero to six. So this, this shows the uh, the number density of the quasars having the uh, the magnitude brighter than minus 27 magnitude. And as you know, the, uh, the quasar number density uh, shows a peak at around redshift two to three. And then it, you know, uh, rapidly, the number density rapidly decreases towards redshift six or the reionization epoch. And, uh, you know, then, the, the number density of the quasar is not very large at redshift six. So uh, if you uh, use the, uh, the quasar luminosity function and estimate the uh, number of the ionizing photons, then what you get is that you know, only 10%. You know, this is the estimate of the, uh, the fraction of the, uh, the quasar contribution to the uh, UV background. Uh, at each redshift, but uh, you know, as you can see, the other uh, contribution of the uh, the quasar uh, is pretty small, like a few few percent level at redshift six. And well, you know, we don't know how the quasar number density evolves, but uh, uh, probably you know, if you assume this drops, uh, you know, showing the similar trend towards high Z, then the uh, the quasar contribution even become smaller uh, towards high Z. But uh, well. Faint AGN, that is the story is a little bit different. You know, faint AGNs, uh, you know, uh, it is quite difficult to distinguish with the ordinary star forming galaxies because the other, they don't show the strong X rays or the uh, strong spectral features uh, in the, their data. Uh, several years ago, uh, there was the other big news about the other faint AGN at Redshift 6. So uh, the, 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 the research group uh, worked on the, uh, the stacking analysis of the Chandra data uh, in the, uh, the HST goods, HST and Chandra deep fields. And uh, what they have done is the, uh, the using the eye dropout galaxies and stacking the, uh, stacking the, uh, the Chandra data on the positions of the, uh, the dropouts. And then they claimed that the, uh, the, there are significant 
uh, uh, signals or five, five sigma detections uh, in the uh, soft X-ray and hard X-ray bands shown here. And uh, well, it is very surprising because yeah, the, it is, you know, uh, uh, it is great news for the other uh, people working on the cosmic reionization because yeah, the, if you have the, uh, such a large amount of the, uh, the faint AGN in ordinary uh, galaxies, so which is very numerous, then the, uh, it helps the, uh, the reionize the universe. However, subsequently, the uh, no detection reports were made by the uh, several independent teams, you know, using the, almost the same data set, and, uh, but, uh, well, nothing detected in their analysis. So, the other, so people think that the other, this claim would be the other, something wrong, and uh, probably the other, you know, subtraction of the other, uh, 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 background subtraction may have the other problem uh, in their you know, early, you know, uh, in their analysis in the other early claims. So, so far, you know, uh, so, so at once, the other uh, scenario of faint AGN disappeared. But uh, again, recently, uh, you know, Jarongo et al. Uh, show the other uh, new results about the other uh, faint AGN. This time they have worked on the other, uh, 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 you know, photo Z catalogs and the uh, Chandra data in the goods field. And, uh, you know, identified the other uh, about 20 uh, X-ray emitting uh, dropout galaxies and uh, derived the other uh, 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 the other uh, luminosity function of the other uh, faint AGN. So, uh, well, this faint AGN number density is about an uh, order of magnitude higher than the previously believed. You know, the previous result is around here. So, the simple extrapolation is the, uh, this dashed line. So, it is uh, somehow in about an uh, order of magnitude higher. So, uh, in this way, so people are still working on hardly about the faint AGN. So no conclusions have been reached yet. So, uh, but uh, if the other uh, recent claim is true, then the other uh, faint AGN, you know, having the other uh, 10, uh, you know, about order of magnitude higher number density, so uh, you can explain 100% of the other uh, reionizing photons at redshift nine, uh, no, at redshift six, uh, because the other uh, number is numerous and uh, AGN can produce the other uh, hard ionizing photons. And so this is the story of the AGN. Then let's move on to the galaxies. So uh, uh, talking about the other uh, galaxy as a reionizer, so what you need the uh, to, to try to interpret the result is the uh, ionization equations for the uh, intergalactic medium. So this is a key, key you know, uh, equation. So what the, it says is the uh, uh, you know, QH2 is again ionized fraction of IGM. So the change, you know, you know, time derivative of the ionization fraction of IGM equal to the other uh, uh, ionizing photon product production rate uh, minus the other uh, recombination rate. Okay, recombination rate. And here there are four uh, 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 parameters, physical parameters. Well, why is the other uh, shown here? So uh, this is the recombination time, and which is related to the uh, this, you know, you know, uh, uh, this. CH2, which is called clumping factor. So how clumpy, it, so it means that how clumpy is the, uh, the IgM. And uh, so uh, this C equal one indicates the uh, homogeneous you know, distribution of IgM. And if you have the uh, higher C, then the other uh, media are clumpy. So uh, it helps the other, uh, you know, how they say, fasten the uh, recombination. So this is the other one, you know, major parameter. And there are three major parameters inside, you know, for in photon production rate to connect with the other galaxy uh, star formation. So I will talk more about the other, these three parameters inside N dot ion. And, but, uh, well, so, uh, so this ionization equation is the other very interesting because for the special case, like, you know, 100% ionized, you know, uh, media, like, you know, after, you know, mm, post, post, pre, post, post reionization epoch, you can, you can put the other uh, Q dot equal zero. Um, um, so, mm, okay, so, so no changing, and QH2 equal 100% ionization, like the, like the universe, uh, uh, universe at register five or five to six. 
So for this case, you can simplify this equation like this. You know, you, can, you don't have this term and this term is just one. So uh, you can just write up this equation uh, uh, for the uh, n dot iron equal the, uh, the function of the, uh, the clamping factor and redshift. So uh, then you can easily get the, uh, the, you know, this kind of curve, uh, which indicates the, uh, the required uh, uh, ionizing photons to keep the universe ionized. So, uh, so after the, uh, the reionization epoch, then you can use the, uh, this equation. And this, you know, this simple equation is interesting because, well, this trend can be easily understood because the, uh, the for higher redshift, you know, matter density uh, is increasing by the, uh, the factor of one plus the cubic. So, uh, you know, you, you have more difficulty to, the, uh, you need the more ionizing photons to keep uh, the universe reionized because the density is high, so recombination rate is uh, fast. So, but uh, well, this is a special case, but uh, in any case, you need to resolve this uh, uh, as a function of the redshift, uh, having the uh, other one plus three important uh, free parameters. So, I want to the other di uh, discuss about the three free parameters inside n dot ion. So, uh, this shows the other uh, UV spectrum uh, of the uh, Lyman break galaxy at redshift three and uh, showing the other uh, ionizing photon emission line, or called Lyman continuum emission, uh, below 912 angstrom, which are the ionizing photons. And, you know, from the other, uh, starting from the galaxy properties, you want to estimate n dot ion here. And what you can observe is mostly that the uh, UV continuum beyond the other uh, 12, 16 angstrom with no uh, significant uh, hydrogen uh, absorption. So, uh, so this is, I call this is the, uh, the UV continuum here. And then you, what do you want to derive is the number of the photons here. So uh, this is the other uh, basic you know, uh, uh, equation to uh, estimate n dot ion. So this tells you that this is the integral of the, uh, the number density of the galaxies from luminosity function and the luminosity of the, uh, the UV continuum and uh, which is uh, integrated over the magnitude. In other words, this term corresponds to the, uh, the UV luminosity density. And the, uh, the, there are two uh, uh, unknown parameters of the, uh, the F escape and the Guzai ion. S escape is the, uh, the defined by the, uh, the escaping ionizing photon uh, flux divided by the expected intrinsic uh, flux, Lyman continuum flux at, you know, say, about 900 angstrom. So this is the uh, the escape fraction. How much the uh, ionized photons can escape from the dense uh, interstellar medium to the uh, the intergalactic space? So this is the uh, escape fraction. And another the uh, the parameter is the Guzai ion, uh, which is determined by the uh, the uh, uh, SED uh, of the uh, the galaxies. So uh, if you have the uh, the you know, observable fluxes here, so how much fraction of the uh, the uh, 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 luminosity? Uh, is expected for Lyman continuum with the given UV luminosity, UV luminosity here. So, and uh, another, well, you know, these are three, you know, major, well, phi is a UV luminosity function. And uh, as I said, which is related to the uh, low UV here. And uh, of course, there's another important thing. Uh, you know, this is how, where you, uh, you know, how faint galaxies exist. So here I call M trunk, so meaning the, uh, the you have the luminosity function, but uh, you know there are no galaxies having the, uh, the one star. So uh, you know you, at some point you have the uh, truncation in the luminosity functions, and we don't know where is the uh, truncation, like minus 13 magnitude or minus 10 magnitude. At some point it should have the, uh, the turnover or truncation. So you know for this integral or including the UV luminosity density, you have the other uh, uh, truncation magnitude for the free parameter. So the, uh, now you have the other uh, uh, four free parameters, you know, clamping factor and three uh, uh, parameters I showed here. So the first, let's look at the other, this you know, luminosity function, including the other truncation magnitude. So, uh, well, uh, as you know, the other, this, this is the other UV luminosity function uh, derived by, uh, with the other you know, Hubble data. And uh, as you know, the other, you know, we know the evolution of the other UV luminosity function. 
which is at the other uh, uh, 1,600 Ongstrom uh, mag uh, magnitude, so around here, okay? So, and, but, uh, well, interesting feature of the high redshift UV luminosity functions are very steep uh, luminosity function, having alpha here, alpha is about minus two, very steep. So, meaning that, you know, if you integrate this the UV luminosity function to get the UV, lumi uh, UV luminosity density, the other major, you know, contribution to the other UV luminosity density is, the, say, below minus 15 magnitude or minus 10 magnitude. So, which is beyond the other currently observed, you know, uh, luminosity limit. So, it's below, below that. So, uh, you know, if you naively assume it, it, this continues, you know, with the same alpha, then, you know, major contributors uh, to the uh, UV luminosity density is, you know, probably extremely faint population, which you cannot observe easily. So then, so it's a, you know, for example, you know, such a, such a thing, you know, contribute about a factor of two or three, uh, you know, ionizing photons, but uh, we cannot observe, so that's a mess. So that's why people are now working on the Hubble frontier fields, as you know, uh, Hubble frontier fields or HFF is targeting the other uh, six uh, clusters, massive clusters, and using the Hubble ACS and UFC3 imaging and reaching about 29 magnitude. And uh, now, so far, it, this program is the, uh, the ongoing, and four out of the other uh, six uh, cluster observations have been completed. There are several, uh, uh, you know, early results have been published, as you know. And uh, this is the other uh, one of the results from the other uh, recent HFF results uh, given by the other uh, Kim Atek. And uh, well, so HFF is uh, very helpful because the, uh, it has a gravitational lensing by the other uh, massive clusters. So uh, thanks to the lensing effect, well, this is a deep field limit given by the uh, the Hubble Auto Deep Field. You can go about the, you know, fact, um, two, two magnitude deeper than the previous, you know, UDF result. So uh, it touches about the uh, minus 15.5 magnitude at redshift seven. Yes, this is great. And uh, also, the other, if you complete this F HFF program, you can get a few sources uh, down to minus 14 magnitude or so. So it is very good. But uh, well, you cannot determine the other, you know, you cannot determine um, uh, luminosity functions uh, below minus 15 precisely. And also, the, uh, probably you cannot reach the other minus 10 magnitude where you would expect the uh, truncation of the you know, luminosity function. So uh, still, it has the uh, problem, uh, it has the uh, difficulties to uh, determine the uh, faint end uh, uh, luminosity function, which can be the, uh, the main contributors of the, uh, the cosmic reionization. So uh, still, you know, it has a problem. And uh, let's move on to the uh, next parameter. Next one is the uh, escape fraction. Uh, there are, this is a quite hot topic and uh, many progresses in the past couple of years, you see. And uh, well, escape fraction estimates, well, generally speaking, in the, uh, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the in the last decade, people derived that the escape fraction of the redshift zero, uh, plans the local uh, star forming galaxies have the uh, escape fraction of the, uh, less than 1% one, 1 level, including a halo 11. And for red around three, as you saw in the ice chaplet studies or the you know narrowband studies, narrowband is targeting uh, you are targeting the uh, the you know, Lyman continuum with the other uh, narrowband, not by spectroscopy. Then you can efficiently uh, get the data of Lyman continuum for the given redshift. And uh, these results show the other uh, 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 escape fraction of the redshift three galaxies have the other uh, five to thirty percent and about 5% for uh, usual Lyman break galaxies, and uh, about 20% for the other uh, Lyman alpha emitters. So these are given by the stacking analysis. But uh, well, there are some arguments about the, uh, these you know, studies, because the other, uh, ah, okay, sorry, before this, okay. So this is a general picture, uh, you know, for low redshift, you know, escape fraction is less than 1%. But uh, probably, you know, many of the uh, the highly star forming galaxies have the uh, higher escape fraction of about 10%. So uh, probably it may have the uh, uh, evolution and increase of the uh, escape fraction towards high Z. So this is the other uh, general picture, but there are some you know, caveats. 
uh, because yeah, if you look at the, yeah, the narrowband image of the uh, Riemann continuum here, uh, this, look at this con uh, contour. Contour is the, indicates the Riemann continuum emission region given by narrowband imaging. And uh, this, you know, the black thing is the, uh, the UV continuum you know, uh, beyond uh, 12, 16 angstrom or the you know, emission from stars. So, uh, uh, you know, emission of, well, yeah, you know, uh, the stars. And then the, uh, there's an offset between Lyman continuum and UV con continuum. So uh, this reminds us that, the, uh, that there are possibilities of the uh, foreground object that mimic the other, uh, you know, Lyman continuum, very faint foreground object have the other uh, flat continuum, then the, uh, it mimics the other uh, Lyman continuum. So people are very worried about it. And, uh, and by this stacking analysis, you know, somehow high in the escape fraction of the 5 to 30 percent. So uh, then the question is that this kind of very high escape fra fraction is true, although we, ha we have never seen the uh, high escape fraction object at red zero. And another question is that you say Lyman alpha emitters have the high escape fraction, higher than LBGs, but uh, why it happens? But uh, well, in the, in the past decade, uh, past uh, year, uh, you, you see the, uh, the many interesting escape fraction results. Uh, there are two important results from the other uh, uh, Isoto Feto and the other uh, Tim Heckman's group. And uh, these reports are, in summary, definitive identification of high escape fraction galaxies uh, having the other uh, 10 to 20 percent escape fraction at register zero. So, uh, especially for this, you know, the, the, the Bosco et al. result shows the other uh, very nice, you know, HSD cost spectra and uh, showing the other uh, strong outflow feature with the, uh, you know, P-signal profile and uh, indicating that the other, uh, you know, big, you know, how to say the other uh, 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 outflow um, given by the supernovae uh, would help to make the other uh, holes uh, of the ISM and uh, which allows the, the, uh, the ionized photon to escape. So there's uh, some indication from the spectra. And another interesting feature for the uh, such a uh, you know, local you know, high escape fraction object is the, uh, the connection with the uh, Lyman alpha emitters. Actually, you know, this isot object uh, showing the 8% uh, escape fraction uh, is the, uh, the green pea, green pea uh, showing high oxygen 3 to oxygen 2 line ratio. So all three high O3-2 uh, factor. So it is known that the, uh, the analog of the high Z Lyman alpha emitters. So as, as I said, um, um, no, yeah. As I said, so, uh, you know, Lyman alpha emitters are very interesting. So high Q is given by high O3 to ratio. And also the PDR would be very small. So if it is true, then the, uh, the ionization of the interstellar medium is very high. So uh, you may have the, some excessive ionizing photons that cannot be consumed in the ISM. So such ionizing photons can easily uh, come out to the other uh, intergalactic space. So uh, probably, you know, this, you know, green pea result, you know, high Z uh, analog, analog of the high Z Lyman alpha emitter would indicate that the high Z Lyman alpha emitters have the other uh, high uh, have the other uh, high escape fraction, you know, confirms the other uh, high escape fraction, and the reason is that the uh, probably high ionization state of the ion ISM. And more recently, you know, there are several, you know, uh, new papers uh, targeting redshift three galaxies for the other uh, 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 for for Lyman alpha emitters uh, having the other uh, high O3 to ratio. And these objects are showing the 50 to 100 percent of escape fraction. <laughs> I don't know if it is true or not, but uh, well, uh, you know, there are many you know, interesting results are coming out. So then move on to the uh, rest of the other uh, two uh, 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 major parameters for reionization. Uh, third one is the uh, spectral shape, Guzai ion. Uh, Guzai ion here is yeah, defined by the uh, number of the ionizing photons per uh, detectable UV continuum at, say, 1500 angstrom. So, but uh, well, this value depends on the, uh, the stellar population, as you know. The, uh, the, this is Guzai as a function of the uh, 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 spectral, uh, UV spectral slope beta. 
and uh, you, you have some information of the uh, the SED from the, uh, say, like UV spectral slope beta. And this gray region is the other uh, uh, constraints from the other uh, high Z galaxy observations. And there are many curves uh, that indicate the other uh, different metallicity and age. And as you can see, of course, the other uh, poorer, uh, you know, metallicity gives the other uh, more ionizing photons and the younger starburst gives the uh, other more ionizing photons. And in this way, even you have the other uh, constraint from the other uh, uh, observed SED, but you still have the other uh, large uncertainty in Guzai ion uh, about by a factor of a few to up to a uh, factor of 10. So as you can see, this Guzai factor uh, depends on metallicity, dust, and age. So, uh, you know, this uncertainty is large. So, uh, and also it is very difficult to constrain uh, by the other uh, spectroscopy. And the last parameter is a clamping factor, finally. And, uh, well, this is impossibly difficult to uh, 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 estimate or measure by observations, but our simulations do the other uh, very good job. And you can uh, carry out the other uh, cosmological simulations and to estimate the other uh, clumping factor. And then the other, uh, well, there are several you know, cosmological simulation results. And the good news is that the other uh, their results agree very well. And uh, well, this shows the other uh, Mike Schultz result uh, from Redshift 13 to the other uh, Redshift 5 for the clumping factor. And at, at around Redshift 6, you know, they claim that the other uh, clumping factor is ar around 3. And also similar results are given by the European teams. And so uh, maybe, you know, uh, si you know, there are several you know, uncertainties about the, uh, the scaling relation and so on. But uh, well, as far as I see, the, uh, they have the uh, very good agreement from the simulations and showing the other, uh, you know, uh, about three uh, of the uh, clumping factor uh, at Redshift 6 and this kind of evolution towards high Z. So then now you have everything. So uh, for main parameters, so, uh, and you can derive the other uh, ionized fraction as a function of redshift using the other, uh, your uh, observed parameters. And uh, like this, so this is the other uh, one minus QH2, so in other words, well, it's confusing, but a neutral hydrogen fraction of IgM as a function of the redshift. So you can derive this. To do this, again, uh, you need the uh, ionization equation, and you can plug in the other uh, four uh, 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 parameters given by the uh, constraints by the observations and the other uh, the simulations. Then what, and but uh, well, you know, as I said, you know, there are many free parameters still. So, uh, you know, what people are doing is that, well, plugging in the other uh, fiducial parameters. For example, this is the uh, fiducial parameters, uh, you know, uh, used by uh, Brandt Robertson paper, you know, truncation magnitude, you know, luminosity function truncation is minus 30 magnitude and 20% of escape fraction and Guzai is 10 to 25th and uh, CH2 clumping factor is, uh, is three. So if you use the other, these, you know, parameter sets and then the other, you can obtain this, you know, from the other, you know, uh, ionization equation, you can get the other, this history of the neutral hydrogen fraction of the IgM. And once you get the other uh, history of the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, a neutral hydrogen, uh, ionized fraction uh, of the IgM as a function of the redshift, then you can calculate the other uh, optical depth, Thomson scattering optical depth, and using uh, by the other uh, multiplying the uh, Thomson scattering uh, cross section and integrated over the time then the other, you can get the other expected tau uh, from the other galaxy contribution. And then, you know, you can get the, this red line and you can compare with the other real measurement from the other CMB for tau. Then the other nowadays, you know, Planck, you know, in, in early, you know, WMAP result or Planck 2013 result, it shows the very high tau, but, uh, you know, recently the other uh, Planck value, uh, Planck tau uh, comes down to the other point 66 or so, point 066 or so. So then it agrees with the other galaxy, you know, contribution tau and, uh, you know, real measured one. So uh, if you think this is correct, then this parameter set is correct. Then you can uh, say, you know, galaxies are main reionizers. But uh, still, as I said, you know, a lot of big, you know, uh, uncertainties uh, in the M truncation and Guzai, especially Guzai iron and so on. 
So then this is a summary of the, uh, the cosmic ray ionization number two. So I talked about C as an AGN. So quasars are not major contributors. This is general agreement. But uh, faint AGN is still open question. And for galaxies, the other uh, UV luminosity functions, including the uh, M-trunk, has the other uh, uh, high uncertainty. Spectral shape is, again, the uh, large uncertainty. But, uh, well, ionized photons are nicely, you know, escape fraction is nicely being constrained. And uh, so it is getting better. And the clamping factor is probably OK. So uh, if you assume the other uh, five shell, you know, parameter sets, then the, uh, you can say, you know, galaxies are main reionizers. But of course, you know, it is, uh, we, we don't know uh, if it is true or not, because the other, these numbers are probably constrained. So the open question is that the, uh, about this topic is the other, uh, there are four uh, uh, parameter sets and whether these, you know, fiducial parameter sets like used by the Brandt Robertson is correct or not. Okay. Then let's move on to the other uh, discussion and the presentation. So the question, well, is the, again, what are the most important parameters objects for the other uh, reionization that we urgently review by observations and phi? Okay, please go ahead for uh, discussing, please find, you know, you have two more opportunities, but uh, only two. So uh, please find a new person, yeah, to get each, know each other. Okay, please go ahead. So let's discuss. So anybody for uh, volunteering? the other many, uh, how do you say, <laughs> active uh, discussions, but... Uh, <laughs> well, we hit on something at the very end, which was that... Oh, well, it's fine. It's fine, please. We yeah, yeah, introduce what you discussed. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. yes. One thing that came out of our discussion at the very end was how long the period of F escape actually lasts in any of these objects, in particular for the for the galaxies, but this even applies to AGN and some of the exotic sources as well. So you can have your luminosity function, but uh, that doesn't necessarily translate into F escape unless you really average everything. Yeah, I think it's an important point. So any, anybody who comments? Yes. We were talking about uh, similar things where could you use Lyman alpha to trace where the Lyman continuum comes out, but particularly what you're saying reminds me of wherever Christoph is, where you have simulations, <coughs> excuse me, where the Lyman alpha escape fraction change, Lyman alpha luminosity changes significantly of different snapshots, right? Yeah. Where at some, some year, sometimes like it's coming out and sometimes it's not, and then it is again. Do you think you have any sense if Lyman continuum sort of follows that to where there's some sort of duty cycle or something? I mean, we didn't do that in the simulation, but I guess you will also have to. Uh, I guess you would also have uh, uh, Lyman continuum escaping from, from these holes in the distribution. But I think for the empirical determination of, of the F escape, it's not, might not be that important because you, if you have a large sample, then you will find galaxies of every stage of this UD cycle. So if you take the average of that, you're good, I guess. I'm uh, Mike Rokowski from University of Minnesota, and to reiterate that point, presumably if you stack thousands of galaxies together, you can catch them at different parts of the duty cycle, and hopefully some of them will show on a continuum, but that isn't the case. <laughs> so we just published a paper on this where we stack 2,000 some galaxies at Redshift 1 and star-forming galaxies, and then uh, so presumably we're capturing the entire lifetime of escaping Lyman continuum, and we find escape fractions less than 3%, non-detections in Lyman continuum. Um, so, and, but then to add to the bit on, uh, on AGN, um, 
the obscuration faction of AGN is largely unconstrained or poorly constrained for low luminosity AGN. So determining in the local universe what fraction of all AGN are known to have um, dust obscuration. Because it, when, you're, when you're considering the contribution of those galaxies, if you have strong obscuration in Lyman continuum, these AGN are still producing helium ionizing photons, or they're still, so that changes the epoch of reionization for helium. Um, and you have to worry as well about their X-ray contribution. And if you take the Giolongo um, result and, and run it through with an obscuration fraction of 75% or so, you get far too many X-ray photons to, to uh, account for with our deepest Chandra observations. So constraining that, the only way to do that is in the local universe now and then hope that AGN here look like AGN there. Yeah. So. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Right, anybody for more comments? Or, uh, well, I find that many people are working on this <laughs> you know, uh, topic, so it's great. <laughs> So yes, I definitely agree with you uh, about the other uh, duty cycle of escape fraction. So uh, it's, if you have the other uh, some stacks, then probably you know, everything, including the other uh, duty cycle factor, uh, is included in the uh, average escape fraction probably. But I think it is very important thing because if you have the other uh, very good, uh, how do you say, the other uh, you know sensitivity in, uh, in in your instrument, then probably if you can derive. The other, how to say, distribution of the other escape fraction, and if you can, the other, you know, correlate with the other some physical parameters, say O three two or something like that, then probably you can understand the mechanism of the other, you know, Lyman alpha continuum escape, you know, uh, physics. I think so. I think it is very interesting and uh, exciting topic. I definitely agree with, with you. And for yes. The, the faint, faint AGN, AGN thing. So uh, yeah, I didn't see other touch much about the other, you know, such an escape fraction or you know, continuum slope uh, of the other AGN, and also the other dust obscuration and X-ray contribution. So uh, maybe more work for the lowly AGN is needed. Of course, you know, there's another uncertainty how you can, you know, where whether you can. Uh, uh, extrapolate the properties towards high zero or epochal reionization where maybe uh, dust are poor. Yeah, so, but uh, well, many interesting you know, things that we can work. Okay, so that time is running out, so uh, let's break here. So thank you.